Guys, welcome back to Otro Video Tomas. Today, we are going to be talking about the Prompt Smart App. Let's get started. Hey humans, welcome to my channel. My name is Pablo Ramirez Torregrosa, Pablo RT for short. Since I got the Dustview T3 teleprompter, I was in the market for a teleprompter app that had no limitations. And after doing a little bit of research, I found it. It does have some limitations, but it's still the best one in the market. It's called the Prompt Smart Pro by Prompt Smart. The main feature that I love about this app is the voice track, which follows as you speak and pauses while you improvise, basically transforming the YouTube creating process forever. Some of its features include voice tracking speech, recognition based scrolling. So if you go off script, the voice track knows and it will hold your place waiting for you to like return. You can invert text to obviously reflect off two-way teleprompter glass like I'm doing right now in the Deskview T3. You can narrow the size margins to avoid eye tracking, which is very helpful if you have the teleprompter close, aka using a wide lens. It does have selfie mode, which you can use with the front-facing camera of your iPhone or iPad. But what it does, it fixes text next to the camera and records HD video simultaneously. So it'll basically act like its own teleprompter. It does have a lot of in-app camera controls if you're using the selfie mode there's a tap to focus auto exposure lock and auto focus lock um, so you can play around with it it's it's very intuitive very easy you can also import you can also import you can also import these file types into prompt smart it's a docx which is like a word document a pdf but it must be ocr scan first so it can extract the text from the pdf it can be an rtf a rich text format file txt which is just your generic text document that contains a plain text and then a gdoc which is a google document import and export script to and from the cloud google drive onedrive box dropbox or icloud you can bulk delete scripts which i don't know why you would do that but you can and there is an annual or monthly extended subscription which sounds weird but it's for the icast which is a cloud-based document platform where you can edit scripts on the web sync multiple prompt smarts add customizable speaker profiles queue multiple story blocks and move through story blocks using the prompt smart remote control which is an app that you can add but it's not necessary, especially with the auto tracking, but it's definitely not necessary unless you're dealing with multiple teleprompters. This app is also selfie stick friendly, which I don't know who uses that anymore, but oh, basically you can use the selfie stick buttons to start play, uh, pause. It is useful, but again, I don't think anyone's using those anymore. A couple of things to consider before buying it. The voice track language supported is English only. I did test this out with the with the intro. As you can see, it does not advance forward when Spanish is introduced. So for example, when I say welcome back to Otro Video Tomas, it usually doesn't keep going forward. Here's an example of it. If you see on the first one, even though there's a big gap in the middle, it stays there it doesn't move forward i have to manually scroll to like get there but on the second one even though there's a big gap it still goes and moves to the bottom part or the next part of the of the script which is great but when it comes to adding more languages i haven't heard any news of them adding more so at this point i don't know there are minimum system requirements like ipad air and up uh iphone 5s and up iOS 11 or higher because any OS below 11, it's not supported. It says that the maximum recommended script work, word count should be about 5,000, but I tried 6,000 and it works fine. It just takes about a minute for the app to analyze the entire script, which is no big deal. Now the recommended max note cards is 200, but honestly, if you need more than 200 cards, oh, damn. damn you got issues or you just have a lot to say. But a good workaround is uh, to create different groups and each group can have 200 cards. So 
all you have to do is take 10 seconds to switch to a different group. Now you can use an external wired microphone. It's recommended with voice track, but not required, especially if you're just recording a video like this in your office. But a simple $20 lap mic will work just fine. I'm literally not using one right now and it's working really great. Zero issues so far. All right, so basically we went through everything, kind of like an overview, but now I'm gonna give you a physical tour of the app. If you look right here, so first we start here on the home screen, which is where all your scripts are located. You can either write your entire script on here, But if you're like me and like a seamless experience, then you can write the script in your notes if you have the Apple ecosystem, since it does not matter if you're writing it on your iPhone or iPad or MacBook Pro, all your notes are going to update simultaneously, which is awesome. If you press the gear icon, you will go into the script settings and there are a lot of options here. If you have a teleprompter like I do, you are going to want to turn on the mirror vertically. This will allow you to see the text correctly when reading it off the teleprompter. Next, you got the scroll text setting. As you can see below, it shows you what setting you have selected or active at the moment. If we hop in here, if we hop in, if we hop in here, we can see three options. The voice track, which is the one I use because, you know, I improvise a lot. <laughs> There is a preset scroll speed, which I feel kinda makes you sound like you are reading it, which is not the goal, but maybe for you, it is the perfect option. And then there's the manual scroll, which I don't think I'll ever use, but this is more to use in tandem with the remote control. If we come back to the settings, the next one is the mirror horizontally, which is for I, I honestly don't know. I mean, why? I'm thinking maybe if you put it next to a mirror or, you know, so you can see it reflecting off like a, like a stand up mirror, like right next to the, to the iPad, not like above it, like the teleprompter. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Next is the side margin position, which has four settings to get your text as center as possible. But in my opinion, if you want to avoid the eye tracking, where people can kind of like see your eyes moving side to side as you read, like if I was doing this, you know, that, then I suggest to select the narrowest option, which is what I have selected. When it comes to video recording, there are a couple of options. You can either record using the adjustable video preview, which is an adjustable thumbnail. As you see here, this option basically puts the text first and you second. The text basically taking most of the space. The selfie mode will allow you to make yourself the main thing being displayed on the screen and puts the text on the side as you can see here which is why i think it's the best one although you might want to expand the margins to full screen if you are using the selfie mode because as you see here the narrowest setting is too narrow i mean a word barely fits in it i would definitely vote for the selfie mode since it puts the text right under or next to the selfie camera, which will help with keeping the eye contact with the viewers. So I think it'll make it more personable. Also on both modes, you can touch to focus, autofocus works as well. And then after you're done with the recording, it will ask you if you wish to save it or discard it, which is always nice to have the option. Cause if it was a bad take, you can just delete it right then and there and not have to wait for it. Now the scroll assist and the remote control are part of the extended subscription which is $1.99 a month or $19.99 a year, which honestly is not bad. But do you really need the remote control, file sync, and the scroll assist to your normal everyday person, even your heavy like content creator? I don't think so. I feel like this is more geared towards a professional team that deals with many cameras and it's doing an actual film or 
multi-camera or multi-character scenes with directors and stage coordinators shouting out clues or stage directions so unless you are doing a full production you do not need this but if you do need it and you do do the yearly subscription you can save 50 percent on your car insurance i mean on the prompt smart extended subscription next is the audio recording and as the title suggests it's only to record audio which when finished it saves it to the media tab of the prompt smart app if we jump into this tab you see that here you have both audio and video recordings and by swiping left you can share it with anyone however you want next the guide this is the blue line that appears in the middle of the teleprompter or display as you are reading basically indicating where you should be in that moment now that guide has two styles the single line which looks like this and the multiple lines which looks like this it's a bit thicker basically giving you a wider area where you should be while you read personally i prefer the multiple lines because it's less distracting when reading now these settings are good to have depending on how much information you want being displayed. Remember script precision needs to be turned on if you are planning on exiting the presentation mode frequently and you do not wish to scroll back to the place you last read from. The timer just shows you a timer on the display so you are aware how long you're taking, which I think this would have been helpful to Peter McKinnon when he was doing the Two Minute Tuesdays. The indicators is just an arrow. It's just an arrow on the side of the display pointing inward, just showing you your position in the presentation mode, which is just another way to keep you focused on the part you should be reading. Now, the audio capitalized text just makes all of your text caps, which if you want your video to have more energy, just turn this setting on and scream away. <laughs> <laughs> now, the on and off fading helps with the focusing of the text in the center. By fading out the text you already read and fading in the upcoming text, keeping what you're supposed to be reading at peak brightness, which is super helpful. The last option here on the script setting is the selfie stick handling, which allows you to connect the device to a selfie stick and control the start or stop actions with the buttons on the selfie stick. Again, I don't know who uses these anymore, but if you do, you have options. Now, we can go to the note card setting, which has some similar things, but it does not have all the other options as the script for obvious reasons. But the only new thing is the note card advance, which is how to advance when reading off note cards. If you're using an iPad or an iPhone, you can either use buttons or swipe. The swipe feature looks like this, and the button feature looks like this. So if you have swipe activated, you can either swipe or use the buttons, but if you only have the buttons activated, then you won't be able to swipe. So in my opinion, turn on swipe, and if you wanna use the button, you can use the button, and if you wanna use swipe, you can use swipe, so. But everything else here on this setting we have discussed, and it's the same as the script setting. A nice thing about cards is that you can improvise all you want, but if you want to change an idea to be sooner in the presentation, you can just move it up around like this. You can also split text in one card into two cards like this, which is helpful if you're trying to do a bit more separation between the topics. And this plus button just adds extra cards. You can edit the location of the text on the card and make it bold, italic, underline and change the font which is great for customization of the note cards you can also share them and delete them in the more tab you have the script and the note card settings and the ability to silence notifications and all the other stuff like contacting them which you can do right from the app and learn more about the app and the privacy policy terms of use and that's it that is the rundown of the entire app and how it works and all the things you can do it's really amazing i am so happy i bought it because it makes videos like this which have a lot of information very easy to produce so yeah definitely getting it for yourself and getting yourself the desv t3 as well if you don't know what that is and you're missing out it's a teleprompter that i use to film my videos and if you want to learn more just click up here to watch the unboxing slash setup if you're still here kudos because damn damn this was long so be epic do epic thanks for watching yeah